what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we shall discuss all the events and the transits that will be unfolding in the month of april <laughs> no no it's may not april april video has already been released in this channel long back so if you have not seen what's going to happen in april then please check in this playlist itself monthly horoscopes so you'll find the april video there okay and if you're new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then approach me through my website the link is there in the description below and if you want me to make any other video then please let me know in the comments okay there you go and before i start on the events for may remember god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will help you from the mars ketu conjunction which is happening in the month of may all right so now what's happening how the month is starting so i've written down the dates and the specific uh, positions of the planets so how the month is starting is jupiter is hovering in its retrogression in the sign of libra in vishaka so i have made uh, videos on mars saturn conjunction please watch it then jupiter's retrogression in libra then I have also made videos on Saturn in Purva Shada. That also I have made. So please watch it. Okay. So many videos I have made recently on this Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter's retrogression and uh, something pertaining to Mula Nakshatra and then Purva Shada. Yes, conjunctions, etc. So please watch it. So without that, you may not uh, understand what's exactly happening here. So the month starts by Jupiter being in Libra in Vishaka Nakshatra. It is retrograde, as we all know. Then. moon is in the sign of scorpio in debility and then you have saturn and mars still in the sign of sagittarius and saturn is retrograde and mars is almost in like 29 degrees so it is about to cross and then ketu is in capricorn rahu is in cancer as we all know and then mercury is direct finally from 15th april but it is still hovering in the sign of debility in the sign of pisces and sun is in its exaltation in the sign of aries and venus enter taurus my god venus is going very fast <laughs> all right so how it is happening is jupiter is in libra it is in vishakha so basically the uh, video which i made on jupiter into vishakha so in that i spoke that from swati there's a lot of options which we have yes whichever house of jupiter is ruling in our chart then when we come to vishakha then we try to narrow do, narrow down those options into a few options but then now because it's going retrograde and it's going back 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 to vishakha i mean again back then it can happen that we revisit some of the uh, options which we decided pertaining to our spiritual practices and depending on the houses which jupiter is ruling in our chart okay so and then saturn is also retrograde in the nakshatra purva shada so it was direct in the mula nakshatra in sagittarius which shows that we were fixing on building roots grounded things pertaining to those houses which saturn is ruling in our chart and trying to implement those things now when saturn enters purva shada because purva shada is the uh nakshatra which deals with faith and enlightenment and belief yes so mula nakshatra gives us the base then we build our uh base when it comes to purva shada no, we don't build it exactly we build build that in uttara shada but in purva shada we develop a lot of optimism a lot of faith and trust and belief in ourselves for the things which we did when saturn transited from mula nakshatra since october last year and then moon is in the sign of debility in scorpio so some uh, mental turmoil can be there why i am saying this is because moon is not only debilitated it is also in close close proximity to mars and saturn this is known as something uh, which is called as papkartri yoga yes where uh, th- there's a malefic either in the second house or in the 12th house from uh, a benefic so sagittarius is the second house from scorpio and then you have mars and saturn placed there so this is the uh, beginning uh, part of the week and because the mars saturn conjunction is there as i said in that video in the sign of sagittarius that there can be a lot of pressure and resistance at the same time on doing things which we want to do but we may not see the results so it is best if we not try to get obsessed and as lord krishna says in the gita that whatever actions you want to do 
only that you can do you cannot control the results so it's best if we let go of the results yes till the time this mars saturn conjunction is there as i have said in my videos earlier and then ketu is in capricorn and rahu is in cancer and this dynamics of cancer and capricorn is happening so many people are telling you oh, i am getting so much emotional i don't know what to do in my career that's happening because of ketu's presence in capricorn and rahu's presence in cancer yes and if you have prominent planets in cancer and uh, capricorn then you will feel this energy more and then mercury is in the sign of debility in the sign of pisces which means that we can either try to communicate too much <laughs> or not communicate at all or we may fee we may feel difficulty in expressing our emotions emotions not uh, in matters of love and romance but romance but how we are feeling in general yes because moon represents the emotions but the communication of the emotions is also through mercury so there can be this mismatch that we want something and we end up saying something else so we need to take care that we do our meditation properly and then we need to ensure that we stay grounded because mercury's debility can give us too much argumentation sometimes or becoming indifferent suppose our partner is behaving in ways which we don't like so we may be like oh i will not speak let her go to hell let him go to hell so that tendency is also not good or we may blast on the person that oh how dare you say like that how dare you speak like that so we have to make sure that both these natures are balanced we do not get into extremes okay that is not very good for relationships and in general with friends also because mercury represents friends also so and sun is in its exaltation in the sign of aries yes sun is very strong it is very powerful there because aries is the original first house and first house represents the head and sun is the karaka for the first house for the 10th house and for the 9th house as we all know so this also means that we should always be focused towards religion spirituality and doing things in life not just wasting time uh, watching movies or Uh, indulging in parties or whatever you say in entertainment so we should be very much focused and goal oriented towards life because the karaka of the 9th house and the 10th house gets exalted in the first house first house shows our whole life yes so that is how you see why sun is exalted in aries and then venus has reached its own sign taurus after long combustion from november <laughs> finally venus and then entering uh pisces exaltation then going through the fiery sign of aries and now finally it has reached the sign of taurus okay so venus in taurus is a great time to focus on the luxuries which we have on to focus on things which actually make us grounded in life because taurus represents those things which are stably there with us yes our family our friends our relatives everybody actually anybody because it's the original second house of value and belongings and possessions so venus in aries is a great time to have a reality check to connect back to our old relatives our cousins our family members and whoever is there whoever has been there with us in our life yes that's a very beautiful time and then on 2nd may mars enters capricorn so this is this was the situation of 1st may and on 2nd mars enters capricorn in its exaltation where it is with the planet ketu and that is why uh, i was suggesting in the video earlier that we need to do our meditation and spiritual practices properly make sure that we visit the sangha of holy people as in sanskrit it is known as sat sang <laughs> because this wherever this mars ketu is falling in the chart because see what happens suppose this is falling in your second house okay you are you are going to feel that you are doing so much because see wherever mars will transit there's a lot of fire and action so now when mars was with saturn what was happening you were feeling that okay at least i am going somewhere but the progress is very slow okay but when mars is with ketu what happens even if you go somewhere you after some time you feel am i going there at all or i am going somewhere else because ketu doesn't have the head it's the headless planet so the the problem with mars ketu is that it is worse than mars saturn mars saturn what happens is you may feel oh, i want to go at 80 oh i am going at 20 but when you are with mars and ketu it's like you may be going in 80 but you don't know am i going to 
Paris or am I going to London or am I going to Hamburg or wherever it is. I don't know that. Yes. So and Mars also uh, has that fiery nature. So Ketu Ketu doesn't have the head. So we we may put too much effort in unnecessary areas where it is not required. So please check whichever houses Mars is ruling in the chart. Okay. So if you are a Scorpio ascendant or if you are Aries ascendant, then it is highly essential for you that. Uh, we take precautions because that is our lagna lord itself so mars is going to be there in capricorn for the next 6 months it is going to be stationary then uh, retrograde then again it's going to be direct okay in the sign of capricorn so so uh, mars is going to stay in capricorn and now see what's happening is mars is in the sign of capricorn which is its exaltation which means that mars is very strong here so we will be very strongly geared towards putting efforts in life whichever house is the uh, whichever house this um, capricorn is falling yes so and whichever houses mars rules in the chart so for example if you are a capricorn ascendant then mars rules the fourth house primarily because aries is the mul trigon sign which is falling in your fourth house so your fourth lord will come to lagna yes in exaltation then things pertaining to real estate things pertaining to education fourth house is the house of primary education yes uh, things pertaining to your home your mother yes or luxuries vehicles land property all these things can take a toll on your life yes so <clears throat> it is important that especially for capricorn ascendants uh aries ascendants and scorpio ascendants yes because these three are going to be affected lagna wise so it is very highly essential that if we have our ascendant or moon in those three houses yes in those three signs so scorpio or aries or capricorn then it is highly essential that we stay very realistic and we take steps one by one at a time we do not take Uh, it should not happen that we take decisions hastily it is expect it is uh, recommended that we take guidance especially if we have uh, the ascendant or the moon placed in in either either of these three signs okay because then what happens otherwise we may end up doing too many things which are actually not required and then later we may regret why did i do that because mars is going to station very soon yes and then it's going to be, be retrograde and then it will again station so that's the point i'm stressing here that we need to be very careful with whatever we do in the mars ketu uh, conjunction or whichever house that is falling in okay and especially if you are a libra or a taurus then uh, matters pertaining to your 7th house will have these dynamics you can go on uh, behaving very rashly or aggressively with the with your spouse or something like that can happen so we need to take care that we don't uh, behave that way then on 4th to 8th uh, moon is hemmed between K to Mars and Saturn, so some strong energy as the month starts. Yes, so when in the beginning Moon uh, was in debility, then it came into association with Saturn, then it came into association with Mars and K to till eighth, there is some turbulence which is going on. So when Moon is with Saturn, we may feel that our emotions are not being reciprocated properly, and when it is with Mars and K to, we may feel too much of anger or frustration or passion inside to do things. in ways which we regret later so again i am saying that it is highly recommended that we do our spiritual practices properly maintain a proper schedule getting up on time in the morning at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock whichever is comfortable for you and then doing our mantras maintaining a satvic lifestyle because the the pitta element the fiery element is very high you see because mars and ketu are both fiery planets so uh, it should not happen that our life goes out of balance and then Uh, till eighth moon is being hemmed between all these malefics, so some emotional turmoil can be seen till the eighth. And then what's happening is on ninth, Mercury is finally joining the Sun in the sign of Aries. So this is a very good time for meeting friends, doing new things, doing taking new decisions pertaining to finances, especially because Sun is exalted and Mercury is also uh, in the sign of Aries with Sun. So this can mean that. we are we are having lot of power when we are taking decisions regarding to finances and uh, about things which will sustain us because mercury is the significant of, of lord vishnu as we all know so mercury sustains us in this world because that shows finances right so if we are planning to write some book or open some new venture or open a company or anything like that then uh, ninth could be a very good day uh, i mean not day wise but 
after ninth we could uh, put more focus in that it will be very good and then on 13th sun moon mercury are getting conjunct in aries again and then on 14th what is happening venus from the sign of taurus is entering the sign of gemini so taurus represents those things which are stable which uh, which is actually shown by venus because venus rules taurus so now when venus goes to gemini we can see that we can now focus on expanding those things yes so basically second house represents our relatives and assets so then gemini is the third house which represents our friends also at times yes third house is one of the kama houses so it represents friends so it's like you have a home which is second house and then you have your family relatives which will always be there with you who will always be there for you and then you go to the third house of siblings or friends and social circle you go and meet new people so basically what is gemini gemini is the second house of taurus and it is the expansion yes and that's why they say that some friends are like family because they can get very close with us so when venus enters gemini this is a very good time to uh, meet new people expand on our existing uh, ventures whichever we have and whichever houses venus is ruling in the chart so but the only thing is we need to make sure that we do, don't do too many things at a time because venus in gemini is like as they say na um, they do too many things together and then if you ask them which is the area you are good at and they are like we don't know <laughs> we know so many things but we don't know one thing perfectly as they say na uh, jack of all trades master of none that was what i was searching so especially in matters pertaining to relationships that can happen okay so we need to be careful then there's this new moon on 15th march in uh, sorry 15 may <laughs> in kritika nakshatra where sun and moon are conjunct in taurus and both are entering taurus almost in the same day and <clears throat> then uh, this new moon is happening so whichever house taurus is falling in your chart things pertaining to that uh, house will have new beginnings okay so suppose taurus is your fifth house if you are capricorn lagna then things pertaining to creativity children or love romance or dating those things can come up in uh, so new beginnings can happen re regarding those areas yes and kritika is the nakshatra of fire so lot of food junctures and um, ventures pertaining to restaurants and fire sacrifices all these things can come so uh, if you are planning to eat something good then maybe it's a good time to go out during those days so then there is this 17th 18th where moon and venus will be conjunct in the sign of gemini this is 17 18 is fabulous for uh, creativity stuff okay we, because moon and venus are both natural benefics although they are enemies and there are some troubles when moon venus are conjunct about which i will speak some other day but in general if they are conjunct and then it can be good for creativity okay and gemini is another sign of creativity so that is again helping this then 19th to 21st we have moon rahu conjunction and opposite to it is mars and ketu so we can feel that there's too much of explosion with moon rahu this always happens when moon rahu comes together so again we need to stay grounded during that time and then on 26th 27th jupiter and moon are again conjunct in the sign of libra and it is opposed by mercury mercury is in aries till then till 27th and this can uh, be a good time to reflect on our spiritual practices because jupiter is retrograde and moon is moving towards jupiter yes and jupiter is also moving towards moon <laughs> so this can be a good time to uh, introspect on uh, things pertaining to libra and jupiter so that's a very good time 26th 27th may and then on 27th sun and mercury are conjunct in the sign of taurus mercury enters taurus so this is also a good time to again go to our finances or matters pertaining to education because taurus is a art sign it's a fixed sign so mercury loves to be in taurus because then it can do things in much more practical way which taurus represents okay and then on 29th there is this full moon in anuradha nakshatra and uh, that will be in scorpio because anuradha is in scorpio and uh sun will be in the nakshatra of rohini so rohini and anuradha dynamics will come so this is a good time for uh do, doing things creatively and going on meeting new people because rohini shows expansion growth and fertility and abundance in whichever area it is there in the chart so 
that is a very good time actually if uh, Ro rohini and anuradha that access is getting activated so so now whatever uh, things we started in the sign of taurus now we will see to what extent is that harmonizing because uh, Scorpio is the debilitation sign of the moon. Yes, so moon was exalted uh, when the new moon happened. Yes, uh, on uh, 15, but now it has gone to the sign of debility. So we will see whatever actions we took when um, uh, sun and moon were conjunct in Taurus, which is new beginnings as they say, Amavasya. To what extent is it uh, actually harmonizing with uh, my assets in life because Scorpio represents the original 8th house where things are taken away from us which is opposite to 2nd house which shows sustenance so we will see that suppose we made some friends or we made some uh, groups then we may feel that okay I don't think I'll be gelling well with this person or with this group then we may cut off some people or we may go and join some new groups or whatever we are doing we will see that into completion yes because when the moon is full there's a lot of light and we can see things in a very clearer perspective okay so that is it for May horoscope and then the month ends with again Moon Saturn conjunct in the sign of Sagittarius then Ketu and Mars are conjunct in Capricorn and then Sun Mercury is conjunct in the sign of Taurus Venus is in Gemini Rahu is in Capricorn uh, Rahu is in Cancer sorry and Jupiter is retrograde like Saturn in the Nakshatra of Vishaka in the sign of Libra all right so I would request you that you watch the videos on Jupiter's retrogression and Saturn retrograde and Mars Saturn conjunction and that Mula Nakshatra Jeshta to Mula those things which I had uploaded recently you can find it in my channel if you go to the videos you will see it it's very nearby around seven days ten days so those are the things so the only thing I would say is for me uh, we need to uh, be cautious pertaining to our actions especially pertaining to areas whichever uh, houses Mars is ruling okay because Mars and Ketu can show some level of headlessness so do our meditation properly in the weekends we should visit uh, these centers where there are holy people whichever religion you are it doesn't matter and then read the scriptures and take guidance from higher authorities from astrologers from gurus from sages saints counselors and advisors and do things progressively okay and not take decisions hastily especially pertaining to the areas where mars is ruling okay so that is it from my side if you have any questions queries or comments then please let me know and uh, some of you had asked me why i'm not going stepwise by ascendance why i'm just giving this blueprint of the uh, planets because i do not want to spoon feed you so if i do that you will never learn anything you can you will always be going to channels in astrology in youtube and you will be just finding okay how is this transit going to affect uh, my moon which is in Sagittarius or my moon which is in Scorpio so if you do keep doing like that you will never learn anything so I I guess whoever is there in this channel is not because of just wanting to know their horoscope but primarily people are interested in learning astrology yes so it will be a great crime if I just tell you okay so for uh, Aries ascendance this will happen for Taurus this will happen for Libra that will happen okay so whichever houses the new moon and the full moon is happening those houses you take a note and this Mars Ketu conjunction where it is happening take a note and then that is it from my side okay so I hope you can decipher your own horoscope properly and that is it so if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below and if you know somebody who is asking what's going to happen mars k to saturn mars then please direct them to this video and please check out the other videos and the videos of james brahasar which i have uploaded on four parts okay so you will like it definitely wish you good luck bye bye see you